This year, due to coronavirus and social distancing requirements, we are unable to bring our college community together to commemorate Anzac Day like we normally would. So our college captains, Mason and Taylor, our Indigenous captain, Samantha, and our junior secondary captains, Rowan and Ashley, have put together a short online tribute to share with our Eatley Secondary College community. And as I sit here today reflecting on the medals of my grandfather, Corporal Bernard George James, who served as a signaller in the 26th Battalion, it is with great pride that I, on behalf of everyone here at Heatley Secondary College, would like to pay my respects and extend my gratitude to all Australians who have died and suffered in the tragedy of war, and all of those Australians who have served and continue to serve in conflict zones around the world. We thank you. I would like to begin today's ceremony by respectfully acknowledging the Wagurukaba and Bindal people, the Aboriginal owners of the land where we learn every day and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. I recognise their connection to country and role in caring for and maintaining country over thousands of years. May their strength and wisdom be with us today. I would also like to acknowledge all the Indigenous servants, men and women who have contributed so much to this great nation. In 1915, on April the 25th, Australian and New Zealand troops landed under the fire at Gallipoli, and it was in this violent campaign which followed that the Anzac tradition was forged. The Anzac force landed at the wrong place, on a night so dark that not even the shoreline was visible. They initially encountered fairly light rifle fire from the Turkish defenders, but the Turkish positions were quickly reinforced, and by mid-morning, the Australians and New Zealanders were faced with rifle and machine gun fire from above. At the end of the first day, 2,000 men lay dead. For a gain of about 6 square kilometres and an advance of only 1 kilometre inland, where they clung desperately to a small foothold. After the evacuation, the final count of the dead was 250,000, of which 10,000 were Anzac troops. It was a military disaster from any viewpoint. Each year, we pay homage not only to those original Anzacs, but to all who died or were disabled in their service to this country. Their hope was for the freedom of mankind, and we remember with pride their courage, their compassion, and their comradeship. Since then, our men and women have served on land, on sea, and in the air in many places throughout the world. Indeed, today we acknowledge the services of those currently deployed to the troubled areas of the world. Not only do we honour the memories of those Australians who have fallen in battle, we share the sorrow of those who have mourned them and of all who have been victims of armed conflict. On this day, we remember with sympathy those Australians who have suffered as prisoners of war and those who, because of war, have had their lives shortened or changed forever. The young dead soldiers do not speak. Nevertheless, they are heard in the still houses. Who has not heard them? They have a silence that speaks for them at night and when the clock counts. They say, we were young, we have died, remember us. They say, we have done what we could, but until it is finished, it is not done. They say, we have given our lives, but until it is finished, no one can know what our lives gave. They say, our deaths are not ours, they are yours. They will mean what you make them. They say, whether our lives and our deaths were for peace and a new hope or for nothing, we cannot say. It is you who must say this. We leave you our deaths. Give them their meaning. We were young, they said. We have died. Remember us. They shall grow not old as we that are left to grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them, lest we forget.